In this video, we will introduce the Tanium PowerShell security content. This content was created to solve the problem of visibility of PowerShell commands used in post-exploit attacks that are using PowerShell-based malware. Now, this content is available for import under Tanium Solutions. If you have a labs license in your lab environment, you will scroll down to labs, find PowerShell security in the list below, and choose import. Otherwise, in your production environment, you would go to content and sensors or packages, either one, choose import from XML, and then choose the file provided by your TAM for this content. Once that content is installed, uh, you can confirm that it is there by going to Tanium Interact under the Interact Content, then uh, you will see a new category called PowerShell Security, which I've already put a favorite star there. And now it appears on my Interact homepage as PowerShell Security. Before we get into the dashboards, though, we must configure this content for use in the environment. In order to do that, we're going to go to Administration and Computer Groups. And we're going to begin, this is a clean, relatively clean environment. We're going to create a new uh, computer group called All Windows. And the members of that group are going to be where is Windows contains true. Is Windows contains true. I'm going to create that group as it parses the question. Then we're going to create another group, this Windows Contains True, and we will save that for the All Windows group. Most likely you already have that group in your environment. I'm going to create a, another group, and this one's going to be called uh, PowerShell V5, because PowerShell version 5 is the minimum version uh, supported for this. So PowerShell version greater than 5 is the filter there for that group. And then we will save that. So now we have two computer groups that we will use. I'm also going to recommend that as you typically do in testing new content that you have a another computer group that is limited to machines perhaps that you have applied a custom tag to for testing this content. So then what we'll do is we will go over here to Scheduled Actions and create a new group. I'm going to call this PowerShell Security. And there we will choose the All Windows group and the PowerShell 5 group. And notice very carefully here we're going to combine these groups using AND. We want the computers to be both Windows and PowerShell version 5. That will get everything back as far as Windows 7, as long as it has been upgraded to the latest version of PowerShell, uh, greater than 5. Uh, here again, you would also select a box to choose a uh, test group, ideally a custom uh, tagged group that would have the machines in scope as you begin to deploy the content. And then we will uh, choose yes to create that action group. Now that we have that action group, we can go out to interact and we can ask the question online. And that will return true from our online machines. Once that comes back, then we will deploy four different packages uh, to the environment. And the first one would be to set up the PowerShell policy. PowerShell policy set. This policy includes a number of default that are all best practice out of the box. You can mouse over the question marks to understand more about each option. And then below, notice that we will increase the event log sizes to one gig for the two PowerShell logs by default. You may adjust that uh, in 64 meg increments. Uh, easier just to take this number into your calculator, divide it by 2, divide it by 4, however, if you need to reduce that size. So that you have enough event log history stored on the endpoint. And so then once we do this, we're going to distribute this over, let's say, 30 minutes. 
and then we're going to reissue it every one hour. This makes it a policy that will go into effect across the environment. And what this does is these features are available in uh, Windows versions where PowerShell version 5 or greater is installed. So we are enabling those features in the registry and using the same registry keys that group policy would. And now here we're going to filter it by the action group we just created called PowerShell Security. That makes that only those machines would be in scope for this action. And then we will deploy that action. We will repeat this process now for the other uh, packages included with the content that are needed to configure this across the environment. As you see, this package is now queuing up to be deployed. And while that's working, we don't have to wait for it to finish. Uh, we're going to go back and we're going to check the box for true. We're going to deploy the action. And here, this time, we're going to choose PowerShell, and we can choose Clean Transcription. And what this does is when we enable transcription policy, it will create text files on the hard drive that will need to be cleaned up. So this is one of the benefits over using group policy, which does not have that ability. So here again, uh, we want to distribute this over, let's say, 30 minutes. And we don't need to reissue this quite as frequently. Uh, we could even reissue this uh, once a day, and depending on your type of environment, maybe we'll do it, let's say, once every uh, seven hours. That would be fine. And that will clean up the transcripts. And again, we're going to target that to only the PowerShell Security Action Group. We'll show Preview to continue and deploy the action. We have two more packages to go before we are completely deployed. <clears throat> we'll go back, true, deploy action, and here this time, PowerShell hardening. And what this will do is it will harden the transcript directory to keep prying eyes out of there, so it restricts that only to administrators or local system. Same for the event logs. Uh, we, in case other policy, PowerShell scripts in the environment are using sensitive information, we don't want that to be visible to just anyone. So we will harden those, and you can see the mouse over the question mark there. Here again, uh, we'll distribute this over 30 minutes, and we can re reissue this. You could do every one hour, uh, whatever is comfortable for you in the environment. Um, Assuming that this is not going to be reverted that frequently, you, know, you might choose a larger interval of like, say, two hours, four hours. That would be fine. Here again, we will filter by our action group for PowerShell security. We'll show the preview to continue. And we'll deploy the action. So what these will do is these have configured the policy, the hardening, and the cleanup for the environment. So that sets everything in place. Now we have one final action to deploy, and that is going to be the search command history. Search command history has no parameters. And here again, we will distribute this over 30 minutes using distribute over so that we don't hit all machines at the same time. And we'll do this once an hour. So what that means is every hour, we're going to go through the machines and look through the transcripts and event logs and see where any malicious commands were used. And then we will deploy that action. And what that will do is it will create text files on the local machine where we have a sensor package combo. So this is the package that creates the searches, finds the results. Later we'll show you the sensors that will bring back those results. So following these steps now, you have uh, properly deployed the Titanium PowerShell security content. In the next videos, we will show you how to test that to make sure that it's working and see those results.